Hello, welcome to this um, shortened view of the 2021-2022 HDB recommended lists. My name is Paul Gosling and I'm the manager of the recommended list programme at the AHDB. The recommended list programme is a joint venture between ourselves, the BSPB, MAGB and NABIM. I'm going to go through the recommendations fairly quickly, um, just focusing on the major crops. I'm going to start with the wheat recommendations. So this year, the wheat recommendations are dominated by the Group 3 biscuit wheats. We've got five new uh, varieties, LG Prince, LG Illuminate, LG Quasar and LG Astronomer, all from Lima Grain with a UK recommendation, and Merit from Elsoms with an Eastern Region recommendation. We then have three Group 4s, Swallow, which is a soft Group 4 that just has a Northern recommendation, and that comes from Blackman Agriculture. We then have KWS Cranium, that's a hard group for the UK recommendation, obviously from KWS. And finally, we have Wolverine um, from RAGT that has a UK specific recommendation for BYDV resistance. So here's one of the tables. There's going to be a lot of tables. So if you don't really like tables, you should probably tune out now. Um, the form of tables is as follows. Um, on the right hand side, we'll have what we call our comparative varieties. These are popular varieties good uh, agronomy packages, not necessarily the highest yielding um, on the recommended list, but these are current recommended list varieties. We'll then have the new varieties um, to compare those against. We also have yields. The yields are presented as a percent of the controls. The controls, like the comparators, are well-established uh, popular varieties, not necessarily the highest yielding varieties. So this is our group three um, NABIM new varieties. Um, this is yield and quality. So starting with LG Prince, I'll go through them fairly quickly. LG Prince has got a nice UK uh, yield, 103%, so it's, it will be the highest uh, yielding on the uh, new recommended list. East yield is good, ahead of everything else. West yield is also good, but not quite as far ahead as everything else. Uh, Northern yield, a bit shorter Northern yield data. Um, it's fairly similar to the other varieties. It's got a good Hagberg at 250. Specific weights a little bit low at 74.8, and that may put off some growers. It does have UK distilling potential, but not export potential. LG Illuminate, um, a little bit behind prints on yield, um, but it's got a, a decent hagbird and better specific weight, and it has both UK distilling and export potential. LG Quasar looks very similar to LG Illuminate. It doesn't have quite the quality, with lower hagberg and specific weight, but it doesn't have UK distilling and export potential. LG Astronomer, a little bit further back on yield, much more similar to Firefly, except uh, and not so good in the north. Um, Hagberg is good, specific weight is very good at 77.8, and that will um, attract some growers. It does have UK distilling potential, but not export potential. Finally, on these group threes, we've got Merit, with its uh, eastern only recommendation. Its eastern yield is good, it's ahead of Firefly, and most of these new varieties just behind Prince. has a good Hagberg number, good specific weight, and it has both UK distilling and export potential. Moving now to the agronomy and disease package of these varieties. Again, we're comparing to Firefly. Um, lodgings are pretty much um, the same across the board, so I won't say much about those. LG Prince is a little bit later, um, sprouting's again uh, pretty similar across the board. Mildew for LG Prince is a little bit on the low side, but yellow and brown rust is good. Septoria is good at 7.1, and they're reflected in a good um, untreated yield. LG Illuminate a little bit earlier than um, Prince, similar to Firefly. Um, mildew a little bit better than five. Rust uh, are good, and Septoria is good, and they're reflected again in a good untreated yield. LG Quasar. Like Prince, a little bit later. Uh, mildew is a little bit better again, though. Six for mildew. Yellow rust is a six, that's okay. Brown rust is good at an eight, and the Septoria is pretty good at a 6.6, .6, with, again, those slightly lower disease um, resistant uh, figures uh, reflected in the untreated yield. LG Astronomer, a little bit earlier to plus one. Mildew, again, a little bit lower than four, but very good rust uh, ratings and an excellent Septoria of 7.4. And those good disease ratings reflected in the 86 untreated yield. Merit, uh, a plus one on um, maturity. 
Mildew, a little bit disappointing with three, and that might put some growers off in the north. Earl Lakes, of course, it's only got an eastern recommendation. Uh, yellow and brown roast is good. Septoria is pretty robust at a 6.6 .6 with an 80 for untreated yield, uh, very similar to Firefly. Moving to um, soft group fours, we have Swallow, and here I'm comparing different varieties because we're in a different market group. Um, Swallow only recommended for the north. You'll see it's um, east and western yields are not great, but it's northern yield is pretty good, um, similar to the comparators, although this figure is bracketed, and that means we have rather limited data, um, but that's the data we have. Hagberg is good, ahead of both the comparators, and sp specific weight is good. Swallow has UK distilling, um, not just potential, it's already been given a full uh, distilling um, approval, and that is because it is a very good distilling variety. The SWRI um, analysed these varieties um, to see their distilling potential, and in 2020, Swallow achieved the highest average alcohol yields, well ahead of the other varieties. And it's shown consistent performance over the last three years across uh, trials as well. Um, and their, their opinion was that it's a very positive, uh, very good distilling variety with significant potential uh, to impact on the grain distilling market. So that, that is really why this variety has got um, growers and the distilling industry interested in the north. It's also relatively early at a north, so that uh, favours northern growers. Um, the mildew might be a little bit low for some northern growers. Brown rust and yellow rust are okay. And again, the septoria is perhaps a little bit low than you might want for a northern variety, but we'll see how this variety floats in the market. Certainly, the distilling industry is very interested in it. The other hard group four is KWS Cranium. KWS Cranium has good yields across the board. 104 is a little bit lower in the north, um, but its yields are similar to Insider, uh, which is the highest yielding variety currently on the list. Got a good Hagberg. Um, specific weight is OK. It's a little bit late, um, but the thing that um, perhaps really catches the eye of this variety is this late zone yield of 108%. This is bracketed, so that means it's on limited data. Um, but if this turns out to be correct, uh, this will be a very interesting variety for growers, particularly those who are battling blackgrass and are looking to push their drilling window further back. Mildew is OK at a five. Yellow rust is good. Brown rust is OK. And Septoria is OK. I say we'll see if this um, late sown yield holds up when we've got more data, but it could be a very interesting variety. Finally, we've got Wolverine. Wolverine, of course, has BYDV resistance, and it has been entered onto the list in a new specialist category for BYDV resistant varieties. Yes, it's a little bit behind on yield, but has good Hagbergs, specific weight is OK, ripening's a little bit later. Um, the thing that might put some growers off this slightly weaker disease package, um, five from mildew is OK, yellow rust would perhaps want it a little bit higher, and the septoria might want it a little bit higher. Um, but this BYDV resistance is an important trait. We're struggling in many cases to control BYDV in the absence of seed treatments. So it'll be interesting to see how this variety um, is taken up by the market. Finally, just one new uh, spring wheat, uh, group four, um, WBB Escape. That's from LS Plant Breeding. It's now gonna be the highest yielding um, spring wheat available. I've got good specific weight in Hagberg. It's a little bit later and it's got, got a reasonable disease package and small area, of course, spring wheat, um, but been growing a little bit more and this will be an interesting addition. So that was the wheat. I'm now going to move on to the barley recommendations. Starting with winter barley, um, we've got five new varieties added to the recommended list this year. Three of those are two row feed varieties um, and the other two are six row feed varieties. For uh, TARDIS from KWS, Bolton from Elsom's Ackerman, Bordeaux from Sonova, SY Kingston and SY Thunderbolt, both from Syngenta, and these all have a UK recommendation. Starting with the two row feeds, well, I'm comparing them to Gimlet and Hawking, which are two higher yielding um, feed varieties currently on the list. And these new varieties are all very similar in yield. UK yields are all 106%, East yields are all 107%, uh, these are ahead of these two high yielding varieties currently on the list. West yield are bracketed, so that is limited data, um, but looks like it's ahead of these two varieties. 
and the northern yield again is high so yields look very strong for all three varieties look at tardis in a bit more detail so 69.1 on the specific weight so that's good ahead of the comparators lodging across the board is good tardis is fairly early to so naught so that will be useful particularly before oilseed rape mildew is okay at a five brown rust is oh, it's good at a six and it's got a good rhincosporium um, resistance let rating at seven which is ahead of all these other varieties net blotch is five that's bracketed um, limited data and this good disease package is reflected in the high untreated yield higher than hawking or gimlets Bolton, we've already talked about the yield specific weight is a little bit lower than uh, tardis but it's still good it's a little bit later um, it's got better mildew um, but brown rust and rink spore a little bit lower and similar net blotch but still a reasonable disease package and reflected in the untreated yield finally bordeaux very good specific weight 69.9 uh, it's a little bit earlier again at a naught again favoring perhaps um, before oilseed rape mildew is a six so that's good um, brown rust is five rink spore is a little bit disappointing at a four and that net blotch should have bracketed for um, limited data Again, a little bit disappointed in that, perhaps reflected in the untreated yield. Then to the six row hybrids, both from Syngenta, of course. Uh, in terms of yields um, in the UK, we're all um, very similar 107s right across the board for these junior varieties and for Belmont and King <coughs> 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 Excuse me. East yields of Kingston, I'm a little bit behind the rest of the varieties. The Kingston has a very good west yield ahead of the comparative and Thunderbolt, and a very good north yield again ahead of Thunderbolt and the comparators. Kingston has a good specific weight of 69.7. Lodging's pretty much similar across the board. Kingston is very early, and a minus one again will favour um, getting oilseed rape in earlier. Mildew is a seven, so that's good. Promos and Rincosporium, sixes are good. The net blotch is good at a six. And this strong disease package is reflected in a high untreated yield of 88 ahead of both the comparators. SY Thunderbolt, 107 across the board for yield. So very similar to the, to the comparators. Good specific weight of 69.6. .6. Gone are the days when these six row hybrid varieties struggled on specific weight. Um, again, early to ripen, so uh, benefit in. For lots of people. Mildew very good at, at an eight, brown most good at a seven, rhincosporium a solid six, net blotch a solid six and again this disease package um, reflected in the untreated yield. And these six row hybrid varieties now uh, have got the quality and they're getting good disease packages and um, so they'll be of interest to a lot of growers I've no doubt. Moving from the winter to the spring barley, we've got just two varieties this year, we've got Skyway from Agri, that's on test as a potential brewing variety. We've got Cadiz from Sonova. That has just an east and west recommendation, and that is a feed variety. Looking at Skyway first, I've compared Skyway to RGT Planet and Laureate. These are the leading varieties on the, on the malting brewing sector, between them taking about 60% of the market. And I've compared it also to SY Splendor, which is currently the highest yielding um, variety, malting variety on the spring barley list. Um, Splendor is still provisional as a malting variety, so it's still under test. And of course, Skyway is just starting its journey as a, uh, under testing as a malting variety. So coming to Skyway, we look at the yields, 106%, well ahead of everything else, particularly ahead of plants in Laureate. In the east, again, 106%, well above these other varieties. In the west, 108%, looking even better, um, but with that figure being bracketed, so that is on limited data. North yield look more similar to the other varieties, but if these um, yield packages really are very promising. Specific weight is also very good, uh, well ahead of the other varieties. Lodgings are sevens across the board. Skyway is a, um, sits in the middle of these varieties in terms of ripening. It's it's earlier than Splendor, not as early as Planet, and about the same as Laureate. Mildews are nine across the board, as you'd expect with spring barley's. Brown rust, we haven't got any data for Skyway. We haven't had much um, brown rust in trials in the last couple of years, so we can't put a rating on that at the moment. Rhincosporum is perhaps a little bit lower than you'd want with a four, but the fact that it has a good untreated yield suggests that that brown rust will probably be okay. 
Moving then to Cadiz, this variety has just an east and west recommendation. If you look at the yields um, in the UK, it's nothing special. And if you look in the north, it's behind Fairway and Splendour, um, which is why it's had this east and west recommendation. In the east, it's good ahead of Fairway, which is the highest yielding feed variety on the list, and Splendour, the highest yielding malting variety on the list. And in the west, it's even further ahead. Though again, that figure is bracketed, so that is based on limited data. Specific weight is good, um, ahead of Fairway, about the same as Splendour. Lodging again, the same across the board. It's earlier than Splendour, not quite as early as Fairway, um, and milled use, nines across the board. Lacking data again, um, so we can't put a, a figure, a rating figure, either on brown rust or Inksporium for Cadiz, but it's decent untreated yield suggests these figures are going to be okay. So that's the end of the barley. Um, moving now to the oilseed rate recommendations. Things are pretty quiet on the oilseed rate this year. Last year, there were 13 new varieties went on the oilseed rate recommended list. This year, we have five or possibly six, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. So we've got a couple of varieties from Lima Grain, LG Avron, which has a UK recommendation, LG Antigua, which has just an East and West recommendation. We then have Respect from LSPB, West recommendation and De Expectation from Bayer, again with an East West recommendation. Black Pearl is on here. Black Pearl is greyed out. The reason is that Black Pearl um, has not been national listed. Normally we expect varieties to be national listed before we will talk about them. Um, Black Pearl has got caught up in Brexit issues. Um, so I, we've put it on here greyed out. I won't be showing any data or talking about it anymore. But if that achieves its national listing status, if it unblocks itself from the Brexit um, issues, uh, it will be added onto the recommended list at a later date. Something else you will notice is that these varieties are all hybrids. All the new varieties this year are hybrids. And the um, list is now becoming really quite dominated by hybrids. The other thing you'll notice is most of these varieties have an east-west only recommendation. Um, the northern list now is very small. There will just be three varieties on the northern list. That may worry um, some northern growers, but of course, northern growers are quite welcome to grow a UK recommended variety. They could even grow an east-west variety if they really wanted to. The other new um, winter oil rape variety is a specialist category. Uh, it's DK Imprint CL. That has a special recommendation for uh, tolerance to specific herbicides. It's a hybrid from Bayer. So first of all, just looking at those um, what I call multi-purpose varieties. Um, I'll go through these fairly quickly. Um, LG Averon, um, UK recommendation. Um, its UK gross output is similar to Ambassador, which is the highest yielding variety on the new list. Um, East-West gross output, again, is the same as Ambassador. Northern growth sample, this is, will favour northern growers. It will make it the second highest um, yielding variety on the list. Um, and it's ahead of all these other varieties and ahead of Ambassador. Um, only Aurelia will be higher uh, yielding on the new list. Stem stiffness is, and shortness of stem and earliness and maturity are all sixes. Um, we have stem canker of seven and light leaf spot scores. That's robust. Certainly below resistance. And um, for the first year now, we are accepting a breeder's claim for pod chatter resistance. We have been trying to develop a protocol te to test this that has not been successful. For so we are accepting a breeder's claim for pod chatter resistance and Averon claims pod chatter resistance. LG Antigua, the first of these varieties with just an east-west recommendation. Um, its east-west yield is the same as um, Averon and Ambassador. Good as an eight, shortness of stem and early some maturity are at a six. Stem canker is seven, light lift spot is six, and we have turnip yellows and pod shutter resistance. DK expectation slightly lower on yield at 107, it was east west a region. Stem stiffness is okay, shortness of stem and early to maturity are okay. Nice stem canker that will please growers in the east. Um, light leaf spot is good at a seven, and we've got turnip yellows and pod shutter resistance. Then come to respect again, a little bit further behind on the yields. Stem difference is good as a six, though. It's a little bit later to mature, but it does have, again, a very good stem canker rating of eight. And again, that will probably um, be of interest to growers in the east and a decent light leaf spot of six. No turnip yellows or pod shadow resistance, though, so that might put some big off. And I said Black Pearl, we won't be showing any data unless it manages to achieve its nationalist status when it unblocks itself from the Brexit impasse. 
Looking then at this new specialist variety, DK imprint, it's a variety with tolerance to herbicides. I'm comparing it to PT279CL and NISACL. DK imprint has a UK recommendation. These two varieties only have an East and West recommendation. For those of you who know your oil seed rate varieties very well, you might be thinking PT279 has a UK recommendation. Well, PT279's light leaf spot rating has fallen from a six to a five with new data and that puts it below the minimum standard for a northern recommendation, which is a six. So PT279 can now only be recommended for the east and west. So coming back to imprint, um, it has a 95% um, gross output, which is between the two comparators in the east-west, and it's the only variety with a, a northern um, recommendation with 91%. Stem difference is six, a little bit below the comparators, shortness of stem, the same as the comparators earlier to maturity between them. The interesting part about DK imprint comes here. It has a stem canker of eight, which is very good and well ahead of the comparators. A good likely spot score ahead of the comparators. None of these varieties have turnip yellow resistance, but DK imprint is claiming pod chatter resistance. So that's the varieties. I've just covered the main variety, uh, crop varieties. I'm just going to talk a little bit about some tweaks to the disease ratings we've made, which may raise a few eyebrows when people get their um, eyes on the recommended list. First of all, spring oat ratings. Uh, we, we looked at spring oat ratings because the spring and winter oat mildew ratings uh, were not aligned. Um, that meant that you got higher levels of disease in spring varieties and in winter varieties with similar ratings. We thought that wasn't really sensible. It had the potential to confuse growers of votes. So we've tweaked the way we calculate the spring out mildew ratings. What that has done has lowered the ratings of the less resistant varieties with not having very little effect on the more resistant varieties. So what's that done? Well, here's the old ratings on, on the old list and here's the new ratings on the new list. And you can see these varieties at the top, which had high uh, disease ratings before for mildew have either not moved at all or have just moved one place. In the middle of the list, with varieties with sort of sixes, have come down one or two ratings. And down the bottom, these varieties with lower ratings have come down a couple of points. We look at Madison here. This is Madison in the field. There's a lot of mildew on this, and that doesn't shouldn't really be a five, so we've moved it down, and that becomes a three. Just have to emphasise, though, there has not been a change in the mildew races. Spring oats have not become more susceptible to mildew. This is just a change in the way we calculate the ratings. Ryan Triticale, this is not a change in the ratings. This is these are new ratings. Um, so we now have win, uh, yellow rust ratings for winter triticale, uh, which we've not had before. We now have brown rust ratings for winter rye, which we've not had before. These go on the descriptive lists for these two varieties, sorry, these two crops. Um, these two crops are becoming more popular and this extra information will help growers both in their variety selection but also in planning pr uh, fungicide programs. Finally, winter wheat rust ratings. I'm going to say very little about winter wheat rust ratings. There is a separate video which will explain what has happened, uh, but we have reviewed the rust ratings. We know there have been issues with them over the last couple of years and there will be new ratings coming out in the new recommended list. You'll see some big falls and the separate video explains uh, why we had to change it, what we've done and what are the implications. So I, I suggest you look at that new video. That was a very quick run through of the recommended list for this year. Um, I, I recognise that you may not have picked up all the points. You can go onto our website, find all the new tables. The new booklet will be issued um, in the new year and should um, hit your, your doorstep um, on around February time. Also on the, on the website, you can find um, things like protocols, archive, and you can also uh, um, download the app for the recommended list. And the link is there. Um, lots of information on there, um, well worth a look. Finally, I just want to say a thank you to my team. Um, I've got an excellent team of people who sit behind me, um, the field team who go out, inspect the trials, run the trials program, and also the, the, the office-based team who deal with all the data, produce the reports that the committees use to select the varieties. Uh, so thank you to that team.